Hello and welcome to Spiritual Events Directory and the Spiritual Wisdom Hour with Victoria Cochran. I am here at my sister's place in Melbourne. So, uh, and a couple of teenagers in the house, so we'll see how we go. <laughs> um, welcome everyone to my uh, Wednesday Midday Live, the Spiritual Wisdom Hour. I'm Victoria Cochran. I'm a spiritual healer and a psychic, uh, a channel, a medium. Janelle, lovely to see you. I wonder if the books have arrived yet. I hope they have. And uh, so it's uh, great to be here. So I'm here in Melbourne for the week. I uh, came over on Saturday and I leave again. No, Friday actually. And I leave again on Saturday and uh here seeing family took the niece and nephew out oh she found it <laughs> i'll introduce casey in a minute she's uh doing her nursing and midwifery training hi bridgie yes i am good thank you i'm very well been shopping got the new lipstick what oh, looks good <laughs> mm. um this is my niece casey and uh so today I'm going to talk about yin and yang and what that means and uh, I went out this morning, cardaholic that I am, and bought some Divine Feminine cards. So I'm excited to use those. Um, and hi Donna, you're from Melbourne, Florida. Wow, I didn't actually know there was a Melbourne in Florida. That's so uh, great to have you all the way from there. Um, and. Uh, just wait for a few more people to jump on. Wait for Case to put her shoes on and then she can come and say hi before she goes off to her placement. Where did you find it? Was it in a black it was, dark spot? It was on my, it was in my cupboard. It's in a dark spot there. This is Hello. Casey. This is my beautiful niece, my eldest niece, Casey. She's training to be a midwife and a nurse in her last year. Mm. You are. Bye. See you, darling. Love you. Love you. Okay. Bye. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so... I hope you're all well. How's your week been? And uh, let me know, type in how you are. And um, while I don't do individual readings, I'm hoping to do an extra live next week where I will. Because this one's the spiritual wisdom hour where I really am just talking about things that are helpful for people awakening and uh, who are on their spiritual journey. But uh, I know that some people do like cards pulled so i might try and do one next week huh janelle says hi casey <laughs> um yeah so uh we'll see i was i was also um going to do readings on saturday for pop-up psychics but haven't had any bookings yet so if anybody does want to book a reading through uh, spiritual events and directory contact sarah and uh you can book in with me between 10.30 and uh, 2.30, I think, on Saturday, if you would like a reading, uh, $75 for half an hour. So, hi, Susie. Hey, great to see you. Goodness, I actually, um, I feel blessed, actually, Susie, that you're on. Thank you so much. You're, um, you're, uh, I'm one of your fans, so thank you for um, contacting me. See you, doll. Okay, so, well, not contacting me, but being on the page. So today, uh, last week, Jeanette Marie, who's also a psychic channel and uh, medium, asked if I would talk about the Divine Feminine and Divine uh, Masculine. And uh, that does kind of equate to yin and yang, but I, I've been kind of reading up on that a little bit i have this beautiful card out of the energy oracle cards which uh, has a beautiful picture of yin and yang and some people think that you know yin is masculine and yang is feminine or vice versa i actually even don't know which one is which because that's not true the yin and yang actually means as above so below and so when everything is perfectly balanced um, a yin and yang are together then it's kind of like polar opposites coming together and fitting together and everything being in balance and so um, 
everything is energy and all uh, human energy but also angelic energy um, has a masculine and a feminine side and quite often you know it's it's a masculine world so hi Deb uh, so there's a lot of imbalance in the world uh, with masculine energy and that's just kind of the way it's been isn't it like with with um, over the ages the masculine energy has ruled but now we're actually in the age of Aquarius and the age of goddess um, but the goddess is coming in to balance the masculine out uh, just lately I've been really wrong <laughs> when um, predicting whether someone's having a girl or a boy and quite often I'll feel the masculine energy but it's a girl and vice versa and that's because we can be masculine but actually have really strong feminine energy which gives us a softer side or we can be feminine but have quite strong masculine energy which gives us a little bit more of um, assertiveness and, and that kind of thing. So hi Kelly, great to see you. So today I want to talk about that um, and not everybody knows that Archangels have Archaeas and uh, we talk about the seven Archangels of the seven rays so I'll be talking about those and the Archaeas that balance them and then they have masters that go with them but you can't have an Archangel without, without an Archaea and you can't have a woman without a masculine side and you can't have a man without a feminine side and when it's all in balance then uh, we can see both sides of the coin and our consciousness is attuned in to both masculine and feminine um, yeah so if anybody's got any comments on that or any questions or any kind of uh, any uh, experiences that would be really great so seeing as I've got new cards I have to use them so I'm going to uh, use them first so the as above as below uh, is really so what we put out we get back um, and so and also with the yin and yang you can see like it might be different colors but it's perfectly balanced and perfectly symmetrical so it doesn't matter which way it goes it's together okay and so uh, we are either masculine or feminine but then we have those two sides when I tune into people and see their aura the left side is the feminine side and the right side is your masculine side um, Quite often, if someone's in a relationship that's dominated by the male, then there'll be very heavy energy on the left side. Um, if uh, a person, is, say a man is gay, then he'll be quite light on the, uh, on the feminine side, but quite uh, weighed down on the masculine side. I've seen that where he feels quite disempowered um, by males but empowered in his uh, feminine uh, traits so it's very interesting to see it energetically uh, which most people don't do of course the embodiment of yin and yang are uh, Mary Magdalene and Jesus and in a lot of the healings that I've done to bring in people's yin and yang it's happened in a woman's uterus and uh, if she hasn't felt nurtured or if she's had abuse then the uh, Mary Magdalene's energy has come in and actually balanced out Jesus's energy and the yin and yang are reunited and it's actually been really beautiful and I've actually seen Mary Magdalene and Jesus come in together and actually combine and balance out the person's uh, masculine and uh, feminine or divine masculine and divine feminine energies so absolutely beautiful and uh, very important so let's pull some cards sorry one just dropped out so you people are the very first people to experience readings with this Thecla 
the prophetess of true power. I call my power back from all times and all places. I am my own. And I love this because it's a lioness. And uh, so a lot of women are disempowered by men. And that's just, that's, hello beautiful. Hi Shelley, how are you? Um, and that's just uh, the way it is. For some reason, men feel that they are uh, more important or the dominant um, one in the relationship. Um, I mean, it's a masculine world. M male sports are always, they always get more coverage than females. Males generally, not always, get paid more than females and that kind of thing. But now, it's not about it's not about uh, taking over. It's not about women taking over from men. It's us actually reclaiming our power and knowing that in the energy of oneness, uh, men and women are exactly the same and we are all divine spokes, uh, spokes of the divine wheel. And we all have that masculine and feminine energy. So we are the yin and the yang in our own selves. And so it's really important that women do bring in their masculine assertiveness and combine to uh, take back their power and stand in their power. And that's a lot of work that I do with, uh, with clients is to reinstate the I am, which is standing in your I am presence and speaking your truth and standing in your power. But it has to be balanced out between the masculine and feminine. So if you're in a relationship uh, at the moment um, and you're feeling out of balance, that so one of you is not pulling their weight, then you know that it, it's really important to actually make sure that you are empowered, but that the other person is in their power as well, so that you can bring the scales back and then be uh, on the same level and that's really important right the next one of these beautiful new cards the divine feminine oracle cards by megan waterson it's megan because it's double g is sarah lakali queen of the outsiders i have arrived <laughs> I am where I will always be in love and I'll just show you this card so you can get your own take on it hi Angie great to see you um, but to me that's you know perfect balance isn't it symmetrical perfect balance between the masculine and the feminine um, so both of these cards are about standing in our power being empowered as women or as men uh, because a lot of men watch this um, and feeling like uh, that we have balance in our relationships and in our in our life um, and if we don't then it's finding the way to bring that into balance and the last one Freya the goddess of discernment oh She's in her power. Have a look at that. <laughs> She's like, don't mess with me, bud. Namaste, Pete. Lovely to see you. Um, I spend my time wisely. I only say yes when it's a holy hell yes. <laughs> so just being discerning about who we spend our time with and uh, what we give our energy to. Okay. In honour of Pete, so that he doesn't feel taken over by the feminine side, I'll pull another two cards from uh, the Energy Oracle cards by Sandra Ann Taylor, which I'm loving. And then I'm going to talk about the Archaea, because quite often I will see uh, Archangel Michael with someone, but in the form of uh, Archaea Faith, say. And so I will say to that person, Archaea Faith is with you, because even though Archangel Michael is for you to be in your power and to show strength and to actually feel empowered, um, our key of faith is there to soften that with compassion so that you can actually speak 
with truth because Archangel Michael is uh, of the first ray of communication and divine will. But to actually be able to speak with compassion and with love and seeing the other person's point of view. And uh, that's a skill that not everybody has. So uh, to call in Archaea Faith is a good one when you need to communicate to someone in a tricky situation where you do want to deliver the message kindly but assertively at the same time. Okay, so Angel of Strength. I love these cards. Uh, Shelley says, yes, in an unbalanced relationship, what if you're, I'm the one doing all the work on myself, but he's unwilling to change and grow? Such a great question. And I'm just going to pull one more card and then I'm coming into that question because that's a lot of what I do in my healings. The quick, the quick answer to that is the only person we can change is you. So you can only work on yourself. Um, but when we work on ourselves and we're in a relationship, changes that happen, positive changes that happen to us, or negative changes, will ripple out to the people around us. So while we can't force a person to change, we can actually change our perspectives, change the way we see things, and change our self-worth and like increase our self-worth and self-respect. Um, Hi Esperanza, I, I, on this uh, live on a Wednesday I, I don't manage to do individual readings for people only because it's a spiritual wisdom hour which is for the collective but next week I'm hoping to organise an extra live and just to do some quick readings for people because I don't have any bookings for uh, pop-up psychics on Saturday that was uh, scheduled so I, uh, I hope to work with Sarah to find a time where I can do individual readings for someone, and, uh, for lots of you. And so I will uh, organise that with Sarah. But please, if you would like a reading, there's pop-up psychics on Saturday, have some times available. Or you can get uh, in touch with me on, spirit, on my uh, Facebook page, which is Reaching Out Spiritual News. No problem. Lovely that you're on here. Thank you so much. Um, so getting back to uh, to Shelley's question about um, the lack of uh, balance in a relationship, it's strengthening yourself and calling upon your own strength to actually strengthen your self-love, your self-worth and the way that you can uh, see yourself within the relationship and make sure that you are what you're putting out is one of self-love. Sally, my beautiful sister, is watching. I'm in your house, Sal. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to come back to that question, but we all have an inner strength that we don't know that we have until we're really put in the situation. But we all have guides that are our strength. Our archangels are there, our angels, our guides are there to give us strength. And the thing that we forget is that we're, we're all connected to the creator of all that is, who's uh, unconditional love and the highest truth nothing to do with religion but we are all connected and we all need to feel that connection so we don't feel um, alone I know you know that I'm in your house <laughs> um, so it's just actually we forget to ask don't we we forget to ask our guides for help or to pray to God or to whatever to actually give permission for the universe to help us and uh, as soon as we give permission and we're really uh, specific, they'll come straight away. Um, so it's the human condition to feel separate. Uh, but we're at, because, and religion teaches that too. And there's a lot of us are disconnected. But in, in fact, we're all one and we're all connected. And it's not just looking uh, for our uh, archangel guides or for God to help us, but for each other to actually remember that we're all human and we're all the same and we're all here on the same journey and that we need to help each other. Uh, yes, exactly. Oh, did you, Angie? I hope that you're connected now. And the last one of these cards, just to help people before I start addressing Shelley's question, 
is uh, blossoming abundance and this is what everybody would like and it's not necessarily winning the 150 million in Powerball or whatever it's seeing everything in a different light it's seeing things as glass half full instead of glass half empty that when we give thanks for what we have then more abundance comes because the universe says oh yeah you are abundant you say I love I am abundant or I love and accept myself therefore people will start to love and accept me but uh, we are powerful co-creators and I know I've talked about this many times before but we all have a garden in our heart and uh, we have a, a, a garden is, I guess is our soul that we're kind of nurturing and and uh, so let's just grow our garden and the more we nurture our garden the more it grows. Um, hi Perla, lovely to see you. So uh, we're in charge of our own gardens, that's the thing. No one else is going to water our garden for us but, and particularly if we're neglecting ourselves then no one else is going to be able to talk us around and so we are we've got to take responsible for our own selves and our own garden you know and our own thoughts and the way that we uh, perceive things and if we are blaming everybody else and uh, not taking things on board um, then we perhaps are growing our garden and only nurturing our garden but we're growing a lot of weeds because we've got a lot of toxic thoughts going um, you know and so this goes back to when you've got someone who is uh, dominant or just not listening in the relationship and not taking responsibility for their part in the relationship then they're kind of you can say they're growing their garden but they're not when when you're in a relationship you're really growing a joint garden aren't you and so you know we could get really f philosophical here but the garden is not going to be as beautiful and there's going to be a lot of weeds appear and a lot of problems because of that imbalance so going back to the start where i said we're talking about yin and yang and yin and yang does not mean yin being masculine and yang being feminine um, yin and yang are uh, masculine and feminine together making a perfect balance and that is in every person we have a masculine side which is the right side and a feminine side which is the left side and when they're perfectly in, ba in balance not imbalanced in balance then we feel assertive but we feel compassion you know we are uh, feel love but we are discerning um, you know so we've got that balance in ourselves um, and when we're in a relationship between a man and a woman then the perfect balance comes when there's mutual respect when there is uh, an equal exchange of energy and that is a lot of what I do in my work is to help uh, install what it feels like to deserve to be in a relationship with an equal exchange of energy because if we don't feel we deserve that then we won't get that and we don't realize that we're holding these beliefs and um, that we're putting out the energy of not feeling good enough or uh, of allowing people to take advantage of us or allowing uh, the man to uh, have all his needs met over hours and things like that but it's possibly what comes from our childhood as well and the way that our parents were brought up and the way our father treated our mother or uh, you know it there's a lot of um there's a lot of uh history there of what we learn through our belief system of what we're taught by our parents and what they what they went through and and uh, what we're told as children can really stick in our heads so to answer Shelley's question and I think I have answered the first part is that we just need to love and accept ourselves and be putting out uh, that we uh, deserve to be loved and respected equally hi Serena great to see you I hope you're well um, the other thing is that as I said before we can't change the other person 
if they're stuck in their staff, if they refuse to listen, the only person we can change is ourselves. And so it's about strengthening our self-belief and starting to not tolerate that behaviour, which they won't like, but, you know, bad luck. Um, and about starting to make a life outside of the relationship in terms of finding like-minded people and of starting to stand in your own truth. And I, I guess I can give myself a sad example where, and I never had trouble in my relationship, been married 35 years and going strong and still in love. But when I stepped into this work, which is only 10 years ago, then it was a big change. And um, at first it was hard for my husband to see how I could work for uh, people and not charge a lot or how I was doing it at funny hours or why I was even doing it at all. Um, but I, the more that I grew confident in myself and just said, well, this is me and I love it and um, I believe in myself and uh, it's what I want to do, the acceptance from him now is 100%. And he's not, uh, he's not overly spiritual, certainly not religious, but he's certainly pretty sceptical really. And that's okay, like I don't force him to listen to anything or believe in anything. Um, that's his right. But the, the acceptance for me to step into this and give up teaching has been 100%. And, um, and that's because I stood in my space. I didn't try to change him. I just changed myself. And, that, and that's what I can say is uh, the biggest thing to do. It ripples out and affects everybody when you strengthen your self-love and self-worth and you change your perceptions of uh, people's views and things. And the other thing is to think about why you're reacting in a way. I mean, you can wonder why they're reacting to you, but you can't change that. But you can certainly think, why is it so important to me that they believe me? Or why is it so important to me that they stay home or whatever? What is it in me that's reacting that way? And that's all you can change is, uh, and it's always going to be something in you that is making you uh, believe uh, or react uh, to the other person um, as you are. And so there could be 10 people in the room and I could say something, whatever it was, and there would be 10 different perceptions of what I said, depending on their belief system and depending on how they feel about themselves, how worthy they feel, their upbringing, um, lots of things, you know. And so some people will just go, oh, yeah, yeah, fine. Some people would get really upset. Some people would get embarrassed, Some a person might just get really angry. It just depends on what's going on in here. And so, you know, like, uh, yeah, if someone has a really bad reaction to something you said and you just think, well, what did I say? It's got everything to do with them and nothing to do with you. You've just triggered it. And so it's the same with a relationship. Um, if they're, if you're getting really angry with that person all the time and you feel like you're butting up against a brick wall, then yes, they need to look at what's going on with them, but you need to look at what's going on with you because why is it so important and why is it bugging you so much? And you need to get down to your belief system and uh, see if there's something that you can change to help at least bring it back into balance a little bit doesn't mean the other person doesn't have to do any work. And it's really frustrating if they won't. Um, and it might be the difference between the relationship succeeding or failing, but at least you've done the work for yourself. So I hope that's answered that question. Um, all you can really do is work on yourself. Um, and if the person still won't change, then they're not showing you the respect, then really you probably know the answer to that question anyway. Yeah, sometimes love's not enough, is it? You know, we like to say that love is everything. But when you've got a relationship, you can look at it as the yin and yang. If it's like that, 
then there's a lot of work to do on both sides. Yeah, so that's that. So now I'm going to activate my sister's uh, iPad to get back to the IKEA. So, and there are a lot of uh, uh, different names. Sometimes we can get different names for different IKEA and different names for um, Archangels, like I'm seeing Zadkiel, spelled T-Z-A-D-K-I-E-L, whereas I just spell it with a Z. But um, it's really important to know about the Archaea and to know that the Archaea are there because we can call on the feminine side of the Archangel to just balance out um, the masculine side and it, it really does help. Got to stay hydrated, sorry. So, um, the main one I know is Archangel Michael and Archaea Faith because I work with Michael and he's got a sword and a, a sword of truth that cut through the crap is what I always say to bring everyone to cut through the illusion. Um, and he's got a shield that can help strengthen us and uh, he's the first ray um, of uh, divine will and communication and truth and it's the blue ray. Um, so it's the first ray, so it's not the first chakra, but it's the first ray. Um, so with Archaea uh, Zadkiel, thank you, you're welcome. Archaea, uh, Archangel Zadkiel, uh, the Archaea is Holy Amethyst, and Holy Amethyst is uh, the keeper of the Amethyst crystal. And uh, Archangel Zadkiel is the keeper of the Violet Flame, but also is the seventh ray, which is the violet ray or the crown chakra. And actually the seventh ray, the violet ray is the overarching ray of, uh, of the age of Aquarius. And so this is, our, this is our time now to actually bring in the violet ray and, and really strengthen our connection to the unconditional love of the creator and to also strengthen our connection to ourselves and our divine blueprint and to actually send the violet flame out to the world and to bring back into balance uh, love against hate and all of that kind of thing. So Archangel uh, Zadkiel and Archaea um, Amethyst or Holy Amethyst are extremely important in uh, transmuting um, negative energy to positive energy, to love, and so bringing in that yin and yang that way. Archangel Gabriel has Archaea Annunciata. Um, I often uh, know it as hope, so hope and Gabriel, but uh, this website, which is archaeaguidance.com, so I always like to reference what I'm uh, what I'm accessing, uh, says Archaea Annunciata. So Gabriel uh, is the sixth ray, maybe? I'll have to go back to another... Uh... Yeah, so Archaea Annunciata, Angel of Hope. So that's why I know Gabriel as uh, Hope. Um, gives you a voice to your hopes and dreams so that you may share them with the world. Archaea Amethystia, or Holy Amethyst, she helps you release negativity and brings forth positive energy with it, which will help you in your spiritual journey. So we are going from the seventh down. So uh, Gabriel and Hope are the sixth ray. Uh, the fifth ray, Archaea Aurora, who goes with Archangel Uriel. Uriel's been coming in for me a lot lately and he works a lot with uh, people who are stepping into their uh, spiritual journey but he's one of the Archangels of the four directions. So there's uh, Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael and Michael. Always bring them in when I'm working with people. I just plonk them in the four corners of the room and they keep the energy nice and clear but Uriel also works with music and harmony and uh, Archaea Aurora the feminine side of Uriel 
uh, illuminates the way to all the goodness in the world and helps you to see the beauty in everything. So that is beautiful. She's the Archangel of Grace. So then we have Archangel Jophiel and Archia uh, Christophina. Uh, and uh, she's the Angel of Clarity. So simply, Christophina helps you to remember who you are and what your place is in the world. How gorgeous. So I think we might bring in the Archaeas in uh, meditation soon, which would be really beautiful. Um, I know Jophiel as, uh, Jophiel's name meaning beauty of God. So I actually uh, feel that he, uh, and a lot of people say that Jophiel is female, but Jophiel, all, all archangels are energy, but they're balanced with the masculine and the feminine. And they're actually androgynous anyway, but they, you know they have that masculine and feminine perfectly balanced. Um, then we have uh, Archangel Azrael has Archaea Magdalena, Archangel Raphael, Archaea Mary. It's actually Mother Mary is uh, Archangel Raphael's feminine side. So how beautiful is that? Archangel Haniel, Archaea Marilisa. Archangel Michael, Archaea Michaela, and I know her as Archaea Faith. Archangel Chamuel, Archaea Seraphina. They're beautiful names, aren't they? Archangel Sandalphon, Archaea Shekina, and Archangel Metatron, Archaea Sophia. So Archaea Magdalena brings you strength to practice forgiveness for yourselves and others. Archaea Mary, the angel of virtue, Mary nurtures you to be the person you came here to be. Archaea Marilisa. Marilisa helps you to see the beauty within. She's the angel of radiance. Archaea Michaela, the angel of faith. So that's why I know her as Archaea Faith. Uh, she will constantly remind you that you're safe and loved. Archaea Seraphina, the angel of charity, she brings to you a feeling of love and acceptance for yourself and others. Archaea Shekina, the angel of patience. It's Archaea, so it's A-R-C-H-E-I-A. I have put some funny spellings in the past into Google and it still comes up Archaea, but it's A-R-C-H-E-I-A. The Angel of Patience, uh, Shekinah, no need to fear, Shekinah is here. She provides you with a safe environment and supports you in your spiritual journey. Archaea Sophia is the Angel of Truth. Everyone has their own truth and Sophia is here to help you to see yourself honestly. So they're the Archaea that go with the, the main Archangels, but all Archangels and all angels will have a feminine side. Um, so that's really great. Um, I just got a message, so I'm just going to pop that up there. All right, so, and then uh, this person who has written this uh, from Archaea Guidance says, just as people have masculine and feminine energy, so do the angels. The masculine energy of the archangels has been depicted heavily throughout history. Many people have worked with them in their masculine capacity, but few know their feminine side. As the new universal energy is changing to feminine to balance the masculine energy already in place, the Archaea are here to help usher it in. They are asking you to call on them to make this transition smooth and easy for everyone. Um, so that's really wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go back. Um, and if anyone has any questions or any comments, please pop them up. And I just... Uh, but it, it, is, uh, it is a really good thing to think about just, you know, the balance in your life between masculine and feminine. Um, you know, I mean, you can't... If you're in a family like I had three boys and and uh, husband and the only other female was the dog but that was okay <laughs> but I learned to like cricket and football and uh, but 
uh, it kind of balanced itself out because I just love the boys and you know but sometimes things like that you can't help um, but it, it's the way you're treated and it's the way uh, you allow yourself to be treated and I guess I just want to talk about that a bit because people might get offended if you say well are you allowing it and you might get a bit kind of thingy about it but are you allowing uh, people to uh, dominate you or for uh, your life to be in balance by always allowing them to make the choices and uh, to make the decisions and and things and what are you allowing um, that is putting things out of balance and what does that say about you and how you love yourself or don't love yourself uh, to make that happen so or what are you doing that is actually overriding other people all the time I mean we can we, we need to be really you know I like the, the, the last comment was um, about the angel of truth everybody has their own truth it doesn't matter that it, it, everyone has their own truth, but it's not always the truth that um, that other people see, you know. And so, if we have our own truth and we live by that, then that's really great. Because uh, if we live our own truth and we speak it, but we walk the walk and we talk the talk, then nobody can argue with that. They might say, "Oh, I don't agree with you." But it, it keeps you in integrity because you are living your truth. But if you talk the talk but you don't walk the walk, then people see through that pretty quickly, don't they? Um, and sometimes we can be in a truth that is in it, it keeps us in ego and uh, that we can't see that other people can see we're not in our own truth. And so, you know, these kinds of things are pretty confronting that we need to look at. But to bring things back into balance in our life, we do need to really uh, put everything on the table, warts and all, and just really think about, are we in our own truth? And are there things that we need to change um, and not just blame everybody else? So, um, you know, that's the way it goes, really. So, quarter to, to uh, one already, I'm just going to... Uh, do another card from the Divine Feminine and see uh, what comes out and then I'm actually going to facilitate a, uh, a meditation to bring in the Archaea. Now I actually don't know what it's going to be because I haven't done it yet but I'll ask uh, Archangel Michael and Archaea Faith to uh, facilitate it for us to actually help us to feel the feminine energy of the archangel that's with us and it actually doesn't matter if we know who it is or not it's just about bringing in the masculine energy and then asking um, to feel the feminine and then asking for a, for a healing and a balance on our masculine and feminine energies and just let's do that and see what happens so just asking for some guidance from these beautiful cards the divine feminine by Megan Waterson just to show you these again and uh, okay so this one has come out again so obviously this one and you can see that it's perfectly symmetrical but because they're brand new I hope you'll forgive me I'm going to get the book out so you get the uh, complete message but this is obviously for everybody Sarah Lakali, Queen of the Outsiders. I have arrived. I am where I all, will always be in love. And it's not in love, love. It's operating from a place of love. And that's where we're all striving to, to uh, be operating from. So now I need to find Queen. Esther, Sarah Lakali, QRS, mm. do apologise for my, uh, oh. in, actually not in order, when in doubt, look in the index, um, here we go, 210. 
No wonder I couldn't find it. Sarah Lakali is the symbol of the love that endures, the love that never dies. There are three main legends that surround Saint Sarah. First, she is known as a charitable noblewoman who collected arms for the poor in Saint Marie de la Mer in the south of France at the beginning of the first century. Hi Jackie, great to see you. She had a vision that the female saints who were present at Jesus' death would arrive on their shores. Anyway, it's a true kind of uh, known person. She's known as the Queen of the Outsiders. She is the beloved patron saint of the Romani people. She is carried from her crypt in the cathedral to the sea on horseback every May 24th by thousands of Romani who, are ga who gather annually to celebrate her. No matter who you are or where you are, Saint Sarah's love is the kind that reaches you. There's nothing you need to perfect or prove. There's nothing you need to wait to become. That's really important, isn't it? What are we waiting for? What are we waiting to become? We are who we are now. Uh, there's only the deep abiding truth that love is not outside of you. You are never an outsider to love. You are love. Wow, I love it. Saint Sarah is the ultimate love card. The one that whispers what you've always known, that love is our true purpose and our only true home. Love is where we all arrive. No matter how persecuted, how lonely, how outcast we might feel. This is the oneness card. This is the card of the unconditional love of the Creator. Wow. No matter how long it has been since we felt loved, Saint Sarah is the healing that comes when we embody love again. She is here to welcome us back to the singular destination we actually never left. Home is only ever as far as we allow ourselves to be separate from the space of our own heart. Love is where the heart is. I love that saying. Oh, sorry. Home is where the heart is. Love is where the heart is. So, soul voice meditation. Enter the heart. Ask to experience love, true love, and let it fill you head to soul. Intention. I have arrived. I am where I always will be in love. Okay, let's do this. I'm holding up this beautiful card. Saint Sarah. Mm. Perfectly balanced, yin and yang. So close your eyes. Take a breath. Breathe your energy down into your heart space. And feel yourself in your heart space. We ask Saint Sarah through the energy of the creator of all that is, to help us to experience love, what it feels like, true love, in the highest and best way, for our highest and best. And then just allow the love to, to flood you, head to toe, breathing in and out, focusing on the heart space, And we can say, I have arrived. I am where I will always be in love. I am love. I give love. I am in love. And just allow the energy to change. And now we call in the Archangel, who is your guide. Calling in the prominent Archangel, who is your guide, in their masculine form. You feel them on your right side. And I've just got a slight tingle on my shoulder. And ask them to help you to experience the masculine energy from them with love and thanks in the highest and best way and just allow that to happen.
you might see, you might feel, might just be a slight change. I'm actually feeling some in my solar plexus too. And now we call in the Archaea, the feminine side of your Archangel. And it just came all up my left side. And that energy is compassion, a soft, tender kindness, a love. That's just a bit more gentle. And then now we ask our Archangel and Archaea to balance their energy within us, balance out our masculine and feminine sides until we're perfectly in balance, perfectly yin with yang, our divine feminine with our divine goddess in the highest and best way. Thank you. It is done, it is done, it is done. And just as you breathe gently in and out, allow your energies to be balanced by our Archangel and Archaea. And then it will be integrated through your chakras and your energy fields. And then also asking for a grounding and a chakra balance and alignment and activation in the highest and best way. And I'm really feeling it down in my base chakra and in my abdomen. then when you feel it's finished just give them thanks um, and ask for some guidance uh, for, some, for your highest and best and it might come now but it might come later uh, just depending on how you receive messages um, but let's empty our minds and see a whiteboard I have a friend, Gemma, some of you met Gemma online. Um, she actually gets the words written on the whiteboard. <laughs> uh, you might like to see a, a picture like in a movie. We'll get a feeling, a knowing. Uh, but now, see the whiteboard, blank screen, empty your mind and ask for the message for your highest and best. I've got a word truth, so that was lovely to know I'm on the right track with that. And if anybody would like to share, I'd love to know what happened. Now, as you're all finishing up with your lovely meditation, one more card from the Energy Oracle Cards by Sandra Ann Taylor.
And how did you go? Anyone wants to pop up a comment or uh, experience? That would be awesome. Um. Oh, you're all still in bliss land. I saw the words love, light and centered. Oh, that's awesome. That's beautiful, Janelle. Thanks for sharing that. That you saw the words, that's great. Awesome meditation. That's great. That's really good. I'm glad you liked it. I'm just getting three cards here that seem to be... The words forgiveness, love and trust popped into my head. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, forgiveness is really important. And sometimes we might not think of anybody that we need to forgive or any situation. Might be forgiving ourselves, but letting the past go and just uh, being in the moment and bringing in love, like that beautiful card, just knowing everything revolves around love. And trust, trust is the word that I just tell people. If I didn't trust what I receive and uh, that I'm on the right path and everything, then my work wouldn't be worth a grain of salt. You know, it, we've just got to really love and trust and just forgive the past and, and move on. So beautiful word, Sal. That's awesome. Did Holly get a message about about what's going on with her? Poor Sal and Paul and uh, her youngest daughter, Casey's sister, are in the hospital at the moment, waiting to find out what's going on with Holly, but hopefully she'll be home soon. Love is the answer from me and best from Des. Oh, hi Des, great to see you. That's awesome. Love is the answer and best. Bridgie, I, so I got Archangel Michael. Oh, hold on. I've got Archangel Michael and his female side both standing next to me and then just a complete feeling of love and bliss. No words, just feeling of bliss and happiness. <laughs> Sal says Holly's watching Netflix. No meditation for her. Good on her. <laughs> so funny. That's funny. Um, okay, so I got a yin and yang from a man holding a coin and goddess of the moon. So that's the masculine and feminine, isn't it? So, you know, we have our practical, assertive side, and then we have our kind of goddessy, uh, feminine, you know, impractical side, I guess. And when they're balanced, then it's, it makes the perfect us. And some of us have uh, different ways of balancing that. But um, you know when you're feeling in balance and... Uh, happy with the world then you've got both things going on we have to attend to practicalities and money and everything but we also need to dream our dreams and to reach for the moon and to actually uh, revel in our in our beauty so we've got a kind of uh, our outside and our inside and we need to balance them both and appreciate both so that's the way I kind of read those. But um, in terms of what we're talking about today, but uh, you might have some other ideas on that. Please pop them up if you, um, if you feel. But um, it can also mean abundance coming, a new job or uh, a, a boss uh, who kind of is leading the way and goddess of the moon is reaching for our highest potential you know and actually uh seeing the inner beauty of, of everything and everyone roxy says hi roxy uh love healing that's just beautiful if you've got words that was lovely that's just amazing well done everyone how about feelings? Did anyone feel the energy shift? I mean, you can give me just thumbs up or something or type it in. Um, I, I did, but I, I felt a lot going on down here. So obviously I needed a bit of balance down in my base chakras. Uh, so that was really great. Um, 
and you know I connect with them a lot so sometimes I don't feel a lot um, because I'm used to it but it was a really nice uh, feeling and I, I felt a bit of a balance happening so there's a love heart so that's really good so guys it's one o'clock already and uh, I um, I've just it's just been a lovely hour um, so I thank everybody for being on you felt tingly tingles is good so I just want to do a bit of a plug too, a couple of plugs. Uh, Pop-up psychics, there are three of us on Saturday who are taking appointments through Spiritual Events Directory. Um, oh good, Bridgie says, big energy shift in root and solar plexus chakra. That's great. That's, a real, that's really good. Because um, the, the masters will balance out all the chakras and it kind of, with a pendulum it goes uh, clockwise balance and then anti-clockwise so you know it kind of does that um so if you've got a nice balance and that's balancing feminine and masculine as well um so if anybody would like to book a reading please do so the other thing is that um i met the beautiful anna anderson from quantum living podcasts uh yesterday um she lives uh here in victoria so uh Oh, Angie felt it in her heart. That's beautiful, tingling. Um, so we met for coffee. I came across Anna just by accident. Um, well, it wasn't really an accident. It was divine intervention because we've just found each other. We've done podcast. And so part one is out already. Um, and she's just sent me a message to say part two is coming out in the next hour. Um, and so she talked to me about, uh, it's called Psychic Talk with Victoria Cochran. And she talks to me about my psychic journey and she's very interested in the intersection of psychicness between uh, and psychicness in the intersection between spirituality and science. And uh, so in this second uh, instalment, she talks about, we talk about the soul and um, I talk about a couple of experiences of uh, healings that I've done and and Roxy says she felt her base chakra balancing. So that's fantastic. So um, I will put the links up everywhere that I can. Uh, Sarah's wonderful. She lets me put it up here on Spiritual Events Directory too. Um, but it'll be on my page, Reaching Out Spiritual News. Or you can find it on Apple Podcasts, on uh, Wooshka. Um, she puts it out on several channels. It's called Quantum Living. A hack to health and happiness um, and Roxy says she absolutely loved part one thank you so much Roxy and it was just amazing um, we said yesterday um, I was looking for someone to interview me on their podcast meanwhile Anna had put out to the universe to find a psychic to interview it's just like an amazing story and we just uh, we click and we say a lot of the same things we, we just are amazed at how um, much uh, we are balanced, I guess. Yeah, so it was a blessing to, uh, to have met her yesterday and uh, her podcasts are great. She has some beautiful theta meditations um, and she uh, has uh, some interesting discuss discussions that she puts out on her podcast. So please look her up, she's a wonderful lady. And uh, and as soon as she tells me that uh, she's live with part two, I'll pop it up. Also, there were some giveaways that haven't been claimed yet. Um, so the one hour reading with me has been claimed, and uh, but she's still got some theta meditations and things to give away, um, and maybe even a coaching session with herself. So um, don't hesitate to claim a gift if you would like one. So thanks everyone for your interactions and uh, for listening today and it's just been wonderful. Thanks Sal uh, for, um, I hope to see you soon, um, otherwise uh, Hunter and I pop in this afternoon and uh, love to everyone and uh, don't forget to call on your Archangels and your Archaea for help to balance your yin and yang and uh, 
to bring more balance into your relationships. Love and uh, blessings to all of you. And uh, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks, Danielle. Bye-bye.